Good evening, you're watching Stanta Sports News. I'm Rachel Brooks. These are the headlines. The Pompey Chimes are ringing out for Tony Adams, Portsmouth's new manager. Says he's ready for the big time. Yes, very much so. Uh, I'm just dodging the balls at the moment, actually. Sussex <laughs> prepare behind me, so if I duck out of shot, you'll know why. Uh, but at the moment, yes, India, I mean, they come into this match. They've played those one-day games already. They've played South Africa. They had a couple of games in Scotland cancelled because of the rain. Uh, but they're coming into this now. They really need to get some good practice in the longer form of the game now because they've just got... The one game before the England A, uh, before they play England on the 19th of July at Lords, and that's against England A, of course, starting on Friday. So this four-day game is some very valuable practice for them for those three tests and seven one days against England. Tell them there'll be trouble if you get hit down there. I'll be straight <laughs> in the car and down to sort them out. What's the insurance like? Uh, um, don't know if you're covered. Be careful. 35 for one off four overs. That wicket to fall was that of Joe Denley. He opened the batting with Matt Walker and he was clean bowled by Matt Nicholson for 12. And I did say Matt Nicholson was one to watch out for in the uh, Surrey attack. He and Chris Schofield have accounted for many a wicket in this 2020 competition and he's done just that. Clean bowled Joe Denley for 12. And at that point, uh, Denley and Walker got quite a good partnership going. Portsmouth frontman Peter Crouch has said it was a shock to see Harry Redknapp leave, but he insists the squad will be fully behind the new manager, Tony Adams. He's also dismissed suggestions he could leave the club due to Redknapp's departure. Oh, that was followed straight away by the reigning champions, the Rajasthan Royals, taking on Kevin Peterson's world challengers, Bangalore. He was a man under pressure yesterday, not only to prove his captaincy credentials, but also being one of the highest played players in the tournament. He had to guide his team to a win over the reigning champions, and he did just that. Raul Dravid with a solid 66, but Anil Kumble, 5 for 5 off just four overs, really got the crowd going yesterday before a fantastic opening ceremony here at the ground. We saw everything from African dancers and musicians to uh, acrobatics from Cirque du Soleil. Some of their uh, acrobats going higher than some of those sixes we'd seen earlier than in the day, in fact. Fireworks closed the ceremony last night, but it had been pretty spectacular all day. Lalit Modi thanked South Africa for welcoming the Indian Premier League, but said it would be back in India next year. But I tell you what, yesterday they showed here in South Africa anything India can do, they can do just as well. 145 test matches, 708 test wickets. The Oval is a ground Shane Warne knows very well. Only today he's here to play a very different game. I can't let you go, obviously, without asking you about the Ashes next year. Have you completely ruled it out, or is there a chance we might see you turn your arm over? No, no. I'm happily, very happily retired. I, actually, let me just re repeat that. I'm very happily retired. Um, if I'm over here, we'll hopefully be in a commentator capacity or just enjoying, hopefully, seeing the sun and watching the cricket. But... Um, no, I won't be back. Would you be tempted to play in a one-off match like the Stanford series in order to win a million dollars, a million dollar game? Yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> you putting the money up? Who wouldn't be? Last time I spoke to you in Sky, we were, we were struggling a little bit, but, you know, you never know. Never say die Essex, so we'll give it a good go. You brought us a bit of lady luck. <laughs> lady luck. And she's a good looker as well. <laughs> well, I can tell you, Sussex moved on to 140 for eight. They need another 38 runs here, and they've got five overs to do it in with two wickets remaining. Did you just know it was going to go yeah, in? I knew. I had a feeling all week that I was, that I was going to be the one to score that last goal. Um, just one of those strange feelings you get. And uh, when the ball dropped to me, even though it was on my weaker foot, I just felt this is it. This is my chance. And then it went. That's team today. <laughs> I'm trying to get as much in as possible. I've got your bent knees now. <laughs> And there's a couple of Southampton players in the England side at the moment. You've got James Beattie and Wayne Bridge. How hard is it coming from a supposed smaller club um, to get into the national side? It is, it's a little bit harder. Any news on his fitness now? Well, I can tell you, Vicky, I have spoken to the England camp this morning. There was a bit of concern yesterday after that match. Uh, if you saw the pictures, he did look like he was in a little bit of pain at times. But they said he's pulled up fine this morning. He's absolutely, absolutely fine. They wouldn't tell us whether or not he had any treatment last night, but they said he's fit and well, and he will be on that plane tonight. Hello, and welcome to Action and Reaction on Satanda Sports News. I'm Matt Teal. And I'm Rachel Brooks, and these are the headlines. A British master can Justin maintain his challenge for a green jacket. Well, it was the French Open final we all wanted. Roger Federer, arguably the best in the game, up against Rafael Nadal for so long now, the best on clay. The last time they met in the Hamburg final, Federer put a stop to an impressive 81-game winning streak on clay by the Spaniard, whereas Nadal's yet to be defeated in Roland Garros. The Essex have lost uh, those uh, four wickets now. We can see the first of those to go. That was Mark Pettini, the Essex captain. He was clean bowled by James Bruce for just nine at the start of the Essex innings. And 
I'll tell you what's just happened in just one moment. But then Grant Flower fell. David Griffiths, on his 2020 debut for Hampshire, took his wicket for 21. Nick Pothas, the wicketkeeper, running out to make that catch. And then since then, James Foster's fallen for 15. He was caught by Jimmy Adams, bowled by Greg Lamb. And David Griffiths has just got his second wicket, that of Ryan Tedescarte, for 22. And uh, that was Greg Lamb taking the catch of that one. So that leaves Essex now on 83 for five. And the man coming out to the middle is Andy Bickle. We thought he was going to come out further up the order, but he's coming out now. And he used to play for Hampshire, of course, and won the, the uh, C&G trophy with them a couple of years ago. Making a return to the Rose Bowl then. Andy Bickle hoping to steady this Essex innings as they reach 85 for five here. Real beer, lots of it. And enough said about the French, the better. <laughs> Red meat and vegetables, and you live to 101 and be doing your marathon at 101. Ever done a marathon? I haven't. No, I've put him into shame. Good luck to him as well. Many years left. Super. Really, are for you to get really, that. Really? No. no. Okay, keep it right here on Saturday Sports News. There's plenty more still to come in the next hour, including the Jers are back on Scottish soil after their success in Europe. We hear why they still believe a famous quadruple is very much in their sights.